Previously, we had looked at the Cox-Ross-Rubenstein model. Uh, Cox-Ross-Rubenstein present an interesting framework for valuing options, mainly because they Cox-Ross-Rubenstein mainly because they outline the circumstances under which a riskless portfolio can be set up. So, consistent with Black Scholes. Um, a risk neutral or a risk free portfolio can be set up by taking a position in the stock and the option um, and uh, that's implicit in Black Scholes probably a little bit more explicit in Cox Ross Rubenstein it's probably when we use the Black Scholes model we're not as conscious that at the base of um, Black Scholes there's a riskless portfolio Somehow that's a little bit more explicit in Cox Ross Rubenstein. Just to note, in valuing an option, we can make use of a no arbitrage argument. The no arbitrage argument says that if you take a position in the stock, a delta position in the stock, and a position in one option, the risk can be balanced. In other words, the delta position in the stock uh, can be secured so that whether the stock price goes up or whether the stock pro price goes down, the value of the portfolio is equal in, equal in both instances. So the binomial, in a very simplified way, only allows for an up and a down movement in the stock. And regardless of whether the stock price goes up or down, the value of the portfolio we set equal. And then we solve for this delta. So that, that, that idea of a riskless portfolio is underpinned by this mechanism of no arbitrage, which is a relatively constant theme um, used or applied in um, a lot of modern derivative um, theories. Okay, so uh, just to note that if um, we can generalize a little bit that we can, for purposes of exams, if we address the following problem, we can make use of this no arbitrage argument. So here we have a stock price. We're saying that it's currently worth 50. It's known at the end of six months it will either be 45 or 55. And the risk free rate is 10% per annum with continuous compounding. What's the value of a six month put option with a strike price of 50? So again, the idea here is that the stock price can either go up to 55 or down to 45. In the event that the stock price goes up to 55, the value of the option, a put option, would be zero. Right? So if, uh, if um, as the stock price goes up, put values generally go down. And given that the strike price here is equal to 50 as well, so the stock price is 50, but the strike price is also 50, if the stock price goes up to 55, and the strike price is 50, then the value of the option when the stock price is 55 is zero. So the value of the put option when the stock price is 55 is zero. If the stock price goes down to 45, the value of the put option would be five um, in that instance. Again, the, the no arbitrage argument here would say, look, you've got to set up the riskless portfolio. You're going to take a, a position in the put option and you're taking a position, a delta position in the in the in the stock. So let's say we go short the put option, minus one times the put option, and then we have this unknown value for delta. We don't know what the stock value is, but it's something that we can solve. So the, the position, the amount of stock we buy, actually can be solved by imposing that equality between the portfolio. So if the portfolio is truly riskless, in other words, if the value of this portfolio that's made up of the put and some amount of stock was truly riskless, then under, whether, regardless of whether the stock price goes up or the stock price goes down, the value of both, both portfolios would be zero. Keep in mind, if the value of the put, if the value of the stock price goes up, the value of the stock price goes up, the value of the put would be zero. If the value of the stock price goes down, the value of the put would be 5. And because if in a short position, then that would be, become negative 5. Then all that remains here to be done is to solve for delta. 
and we can impose equality because we we would say look no arbitrage under both circumstances if it was risk if it if we're imposing this risk-free idea then the value of the portfolio under both circumstances would be equal there is a no arbitrage okay um so we solve for delta that's just simply take the 45 delta minus 5 if we bring 5 over it becomes positive if you bring the 55 over it becomes negative then we have 45 delta delta minus 55 delta would be equal to 5 and when we work that out we find that delta is equal to negative 0 0.5 negative 0 0.5 uh, in that instance, then we can go back in. We can put that value back into the portfolio, um, and we can solve for delta. So under such such circumstances, if we put negative zero point five here into delta, substitute in for delta, the value of the portfolio would be negative twenty seven point five. So half fifty five. Yes, is twenty seven fifty five. Or alternatively. If we put this negative 0 0.5 into delta, that would be 22. Negative 22.5 minus 5 would be also 27.5. So the equality holds, the no arbitrage condition holds. In such circumstances where we can then assume no risk because the portfolio portfolio's value is the same whether the stock price goes up and down, then we can say we could discount at the risk-free rate. And that's the idea here that once we've established risk neutral or the no arbitrage principle and applied and work out the value of the portfolio then we can say regardless of what happens the value of the portfolio is the same. If in such circumstances uh, the portfolio remains the same um, then we can assume uh, that the portfolio is risk-free and then when discounting the portfolio when we take this 27.5 three months from now or six months hence and discount it back to present value we can discount it back at the present at the risk-free rate of 10 percent and that's for six months note here we have it's a six month option and that equals negative 26.16 in other words the value of the portfolio today is 26.16 when discounted back at the risk free rate. The delta position would be 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5. So we take that negative 0 0.5, multiply by 50, it would be equal to negative 25. If you bring the negative 25 over, it becomes positive. So the value of the pot in that instance would be the difference between 26.16 and 25 which is equal to 116. Now the structure here basically follows the same structure that we had seen here in the introduction. The only difference, the main difference here is in this instance we we're looking for the value of a call option and we're starting out with the stock price at 20, could go up to 22 or down to 18. We had to work out the value of the call option if the stock price went up, value of the call option the stock price went down. We imposed the risk neutral condition. So at the basis of this replicating our riskless portfolio, we have a no arbitrage condition. The no arbitrage condition is basically this idea of equating both outcomes together. Once they are equal, we've removed the risk. So technically speaking, once we we set those equal. The way we uh, set those equal is we solve for the unknown delta, which we don't know at the beginning. We have to solve using this um, no, ar no arbitrage condition. Once we have delta, then we can substitute back in. We get the value of the portfolio at the terminal uh, when once the option has matured. We can discount and divide the portfolio at the risk-free rate. And then we use that value because we know the value of the portfolio. We can then uh, deduce what the value of the option is. So basically the original simplified example presented here that I took from John C. Hall, this same structure and logic can be applied uh, to the put option. And then, but in, with the put option, Note that the delta will tend to be negative 
and if we have a short position the put option the way we hedge that is by taking a negative delta or a short position in the stock so a short position in the put is hedged uh, by a short position in the stock and we solve here for the 116 using the no arbitrage method